Welcome to episode 8 of The Story Pilgrim, Mumbai. India has been on my radar for quite a while now. It's a country very different to England, but there are also a lot of similarities. Now before we jump in, please remember to follow, like and comment on The Story Pilgrim podcast. Also, tell people about it. Thank you. Mumbai, India. Now I have been here before, back when it was known to the world as Bombay. I was here 33 years ago, I reckon, when I was working on the cruise ships. I joined a cruise ship here. I was in town for about four days, and honestly, I have no recollection whatsoever of it. It is, uh, I should imagine, in the 33 years, it has changed a lot. It is thriving. The traffic is constant people just everywhere there's little stalls people selling uh, they're here selling samosas there's like looks like hot lemonade it's probably tea um, standing underneath this tree which has just got uh, the roots hanging down it's absolutely beautiful Three or four hundred years old. Three or four hundred years old. Wow. That tree there is huge. It's massive. Thank you. But yeah, you've got people uh, selling all sorts of food. Um, it's just uh, completely opposite to uh, what I had to walk around in Las Vegas. Oh, I'm walking on the road, didn't even realise it. The, in this area, you're not allowed to have any of the tuk-tuks, which are these little, like, motorised taxis that you can get a couple of people in. Here, you have all these little tiny taxis, little tiny cars, Ritz, Suzuki's. Uh, they are all, they are the yellow top and uh, black like bottom half but they're all very tiny they're all like two or three seaters a very old tree and a lot of taxis now because Mumbai is vast I took a personal tour with a gentleman called Mr Binney Mr Binney is from India but has lived in England I asked him about his story and why he was currently back in India. Like I said, I used to own a restaurant in the UK. And in 2019, I had a burglary twice in 15 days. It was in Luton and Dunstable. So Luton town, which I had one, and that's where I had a burglary twice mm -hmm. in 15 days. And that was something which caused me a lot of stress and hypertension. Mm -hmm. And my blood pressure shot 400 above. What? And I didn't knew that I had some problem with my. I had an AVM at that time. Yeah. Which I didn't. I never had any complaints or any problems. But I had. When I had distress, when blood pressure shot, I had hyper. like 400 above. So I had a brain hemorrhage. And one morning when I woke up, my face was completely dumb. Face, and it was drooling. Wow. Luckily, my wife was there and she said, There's something wrong. You can't speak. Slurred speech and all. So we decided to go to the NE. When we went there, they misdiagnosed me saying that it's Bell's palsy, which was wrong. Yeah. And after four days, they had some doubts. They called me back. They put me in steroids. Mm -hmm. So they said like, okay, it's Bell's palsy, steroids and all. And I continued with steroids. But after four days, they called me back again saying that we need to do your MRI scan. Mm -hmm. And then I did my MRI scan. They again ran the MRI scan the same evenings twice and they were sh sure that I had a hemorrhage already. Wow. On my third surgery, they did mention that either I'll have a stroke, paralysis or death. One of them will definitely happen. Wow. And in my case, I was luckily paralysed. Wow. So it took me for a few months. I was completely in bed for a few months and from my left side. Yeah. And it would always help. Like so the moment I got bit 
better to walk and all like uh, so I decided to move to India to do my paralysis treatment at Kerala Ayurveda and what is that what's the difference Ayurveda is actually the ancient therapy where it's done with proper care of like you know very herbal oils and things like that they massage okay so they'll be like you have to be there for 28 days like it's kind of like I was a hospital yeah. where you book yourself for seven either seven 14 21 or 28 days but in my case I did 28 days for the longer so I did that 28 days procedure and uh, so we have six days massage one okay. one day in a week they will just give you a break and then that's followed by you know um, proper pure Ayurvedic medicines mm -hmm. and you have to follow their rules like no alcohol mm -hmm. no non-vegetarian food no sex you mm -hmm. have to be pure vegetarian okay so I had one of my British actor friend called Robert Attico he had the same problem he had a spinal tumor so mm -hmm. he couldn't lift his arm mm -hmm. and he came here now he's doing good he's fine yeah he's fine he was with me for 45 days here Quite a story. Honestly, you couldn't tell, even when talking with Mr. Binney, that he had experienced a brain hemorrhage. That 28 days procedure certainly did outstanding work. Now, I know that the cultural differences are many from what I grew up in. I asked Mr. Binney about the caste system in India. In India, we have a thing called scheduled caste. This is the same under two. Scheduled caste means the people who are from the lowest religion, lowest caste. So, those kind of people now, the government have come up with a thing, like they get more advantage and benefits. Okay. Like compared to the others. So basically, whenever, for example, if you apply for a job, I'm from the upper caste, other caste, whatever, and they are from the they are from the scheduled caste, which is lower caste. But we did the same qualification, we took the same degree, everything the same, and he, being a scheduled caste, got 35%, imagine. Mm -hmm. I, being the other caste, and I scored maybe 70%, which is the double of what he's in. Right. And when we apply for the same job, job will go to him, not me. Because? Because of the caste system. Right. So, because when you take the form saying that you're scheduled, scheduled caste, that's it. That makes the whole difference. That makes a difference. Because okay. he will get more priority. Yeah. They will give him a priority, okay, he deserves the job first, and then it comes to us. Yes, so this is what I used to happen. Now, many people at the government jobs, like at the airport, behind the counters, they're all scheduled caste. Right. Many government jobs, the police stations, hospitals, where they get benefits and everything, they are all mainly given to them. Right. So certain Would, things are good for them. So when, but when they get that job, do they like move up a caste? They can't do that. Can't you do can't that. change the caste. You always be. You can't change the caste. You can't change the religion. No. Once you are, yes, religion in one way. If you convert, that's a different thing. But yeah. caste you can never change. Your surname says everything. Really? Many of them we can make it with the surname. Many of them, we can make it. But what happens if they become a millionaire? It doesn't matter. They're you still are still that, that thing. Still that caste. You, there are many politicians, they are from scheduled caste, but they are absolutely rich and filthy rich people. Right, so, so you will always it, have. It really doesn't matter, but the thing is, they know that, okay, fine, you are that. <laughs> yeah, 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 interesting. Could you... But in big cities, no one cares, like Mumbai. I don't even know what he is. I don't, they, he doesn't know what I am. Yeah. We don't care. But don't if care. you go to their villages, you know, they treat that way. Because they're, they're people, if they're slightly big, with big surname and all, they will treat themselves like a king. Though he is a, he must be a driver or whatever. But then, back in the villages and all, he'll be like a big man. Mm -hmm. Because just because of his name. Because in, in India, what the thing is, mainly we do the arranged marriages. They probably yes. know. Yeah. So arrange marriages when you do, that's where all this problem comes up. Sure. You won't give your daughter to somebody who's from the lower religion, lower caste. No way. 
we had a dowry system you know yes. dowry yeah yeah so whenever a female comes to look for a bra groom okay everything works out well with uh, his job okay, occupation and everything if they think okay i am a bit well educated and i'm making good money i'm based in london or whatever so they think okay fine this match is perfect so girls family what they used to do usually boys family they will demand okay fine we like your daughter now we want five uh maybe a 1 million rupees or 2 million rupees or whatever okay they will say that or okay. yeah because that was a practice it's illegal now in india we right. can't ask dowries now okay but before the practice was they will ask you for a, a flat a mobile a motorbike or car okay my my son needs this my son is working as a bloody doctor so give him that give him this so you demand wow. and if the girl's family don't fulfill it it doesn't work it doesn't happen Wow. But that was the main problem where many girls they committed suicide. There were tortures going on. Really. This is the reason why it's illegal to ask for dowries now. Sure. Sure. Many, there were many victims. Yeah, yeah. In India, certain parts of India, there used to be big problem. Like whenever they find out there's a girl child going to be born, or if it's a girl child, then they were not they were not very happy mm. because. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of them because once the girl is married she takes the husband turn right she leaves completely the home and then she's be she settles down with the husband so there is no connection between the family sure. but the sons they will take their turn in generation goes on goes on yeah so this was another thing and uh, also girls are expensive affair after 18 years once you want to get her married yeah. you have to buy her all these gold Yeah, yeah. So there's the reason why many child abortions and killings used to happen. And the moment they used to find it's a girl child, they used to kill them. Wow. And abort them in the late, very late stage. And killing was a like common. And this is the reason why in India it's illegal to find the sex of the baby. Oh, really? You can't really find even just when the child is born, you find out. You find out. Yeah. You don't ask. You don't request them. It's illegal if someone lets you. No okay That's it doctor That's will it. go behind the bar straight The doctor will go behind the bar straight I find that all very fascinating learning about this as we drove through the bustling city surrounded by tuk-tuks taxis lorries trucks going past shops parks high rises street vendors Mumbai has it all We stopped at one of the two major laundries in Mumbai the Dobi This place is called Dobi Thalav. Dobi means people who wash the clothes, washmen. Thalav means river. So it's basically the washmen's river. This was started by British two centuries ago when they came here. They needed help to wash their soldiers' uniforms and everything. So they brought all the untouchable people from small villages, where from the lower caste people, and then they made them like a slave. They started making them work, wash the clothes and everything. So this is how this place was invented. and there's only two of them in mumbai the major ones that's one here and the other one is on the other side yeah they've got guinness world record to for cleaning numbers of clothes every day that's what so and if if you come early in the morning probably you will see more than 2 300 people working together yeah wow. and in each cube like this they'll chuck at least thousands like 500 like that they'll go put it and then they keep working but they got the outside where they will just wash by hand and then let it all dry and then they got these huge big dryers in here which if you stick your hand in there it ain't coming back There is just thousands upon thousands of pieces of uh, 
laundry from the hospitals, hotels, it's all done in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Mind your business. Got it. Right, let's go to the So we come up onto the roof and there's just sheet after sheet after sheet just hanging up and drying. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, they've just got uh, two nylon ropes that are twisted together and they just uh, put in the sheets between them. Yeah, there are uh, whole families, there's little kids running around that uh, obviously live and work in here. There's quite a mix of uh, crows and kites all over the city, circling around, diving down, they don't really uh, really care there's no boundaries it's like uh, it's like between the the rich and the poor there's there's no boundaries here so outside this little um, stall that's selling crisps chips uh, rice there's the electric double-decker bus going by but you'll find just like loads of, uh, like there's this stall here and then next to it there's a stall like selling samosas. Then there's a, a print shop. Then Raj Motors, bike service and sales. Uh, and then another little stall selling the uh, crisps and stuff. No boundaries indeed. India, from my experience, is a cornucopia of haves and have-nots, right next to each other. We headed off to the main train terminus. Everywhere we went, people wanted to sell us something, or even just take a photo with us. But again, it's just a hive of, um, of activity. Very nice drums. Small, medium, Thank you. Asda price. Asda price. <laughs> He's trying to sell me his bongos. Is that Asda price? So we are going to uh, go in a. Um... Thanks, sir. Thank you. I'm going to go under underneath the road and pop out in the. Uh, So we are underneath the road now and uh, we're coming up towards the Victoria station. Lots of little shops down here selling shoes. Uh, there's a, a shop selling cameras and then jeans and shirts. And we're gonna come up now into Victoria station. And as you can hear, it's just a hive of activity. There's people sat on the steps. 
There's people coming in and out. Okay, so there are trains here. Very, very, well, very old, dusty trains. It's beautiful. Massive big fans in the ceiling. There's like um, stained glass windows at one end. Another size is a wonderful poster here for the National Railway Mazdor Union, and uh, I th I don't know if that's the same guy, but there's a there's a man actually it looks like the same guy, so he's got the same sunglasses on, uh, and he, he kind of looks like Colonel Gaddafi, uh, which is quite interesting, uh, and maybe you want to be in that union. Uh, there's a, a man here; he must be at least seven foot two maybe seven foot three that guy was massive he was huge all right so these trains are much more posher they're very very they look like uh yeah they look like the bullet train i haven't seen a cow yet in Mumbai, you will see Hali season because oh. in Delhi, it's common everywhere. Did you see yeah. it? Delhi, yeah. Jaipur, and yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like drive down alleyways. Yeah. Really? As I travel from place to place and always seem to be in a different place, it fascinates me how this has been here for centuries, you know. Um, and I'm only just experiencing it now. And it kind of feels like when you leave it, it ceases to exist. It obviously doesn't, but for me in my moment, it is existing right now. And I'm able to soak it all up. Whereas back at home, uh, isn't kind of like, isn't kind of existing at the moment because it's, um, it's just not, it's not, it's not, I'm not there. So, yeah. It's, that, that thought process, um, it's a little bit weird for me. Um, I'm sure, well, I hope other people have it. But yeah, it is that thing of like going, well, this place has been here for an extremely long time and I am only experiencing it now but there's people here that live here that experience it every day uh, and I like I said I I'm a little overwhelmed by uh, this all it's fascinating so much culture so much history oh there's a lot going on here There indeed was a lot going on. That just blows my mind, the fact about being present, experiencing what you are right now. It's all we have, and yet how often are we ever truly present? The clue's in the name, it's a gift. Talking of gifts, Mr Binney next took us to what was going to be the highlight of my day. We are coming down to Mahatma Gandhi's house. There's a quote here from him. There is no God higher than truth. So we are here at his house. I'm sure Binny will tell us a little bit more. It's beautiful. It's a uh, three-story, four-story house with beautiful wood doors. So if I just come over here, we have uh, books read by Gandhi. Let's see what we've got. We got uh, Lenin selected works, Mahatma Gandhi and Leo Tolstoy letters, Madame Eve Curie, Madame Curie, 
The Life of Samuel Johnson. The Crusades. Last Diaries, Leo Tol Tolstoy. There's a whole section from Tolstoy here. Heroes, Hero Worship and the Heroic in History, Thomas Carlyle. The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Volume 3, Volume 2 and Volume 1. Uh, it's just a lot of books. It's very simple, there's not much to this house really, there's just books and pictures and uh, quotes from it's very simple there's obviously there's a lot of areas that you that are all there's lots of doors that you just closed you are not invited to go through but lots of pictures of him coming up here another one with him walking and this time he's got uh, uh, there's his Staff. There's a spinning wheel. Uh, it's very sobering being here. The images you have of Gandhi is him with that staff walking. Pilgrim of Peace, 1946 to 1947. Gandhi set out on his pilgrimage of peace in riot wrecked Bengal to establish unity between the two sister communities. His message was, the cry of blood for blood is barbarous. I experienced it in Vegas, and as I sit here editing this episode, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is still ongoing, as is the war in the Ukraine, internal conflict in Miramar, the Mexican drug war, Ethiopia's civil conflict, the war in Sudan. Sadly, the list goes on. We need more Mahatma Gandhis in this life, on this planet. Mahatma Gandhi was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize five times. Never awarded it. It indeed was a sobering visit. Okay, so this place is called the Hanging Garden. The reason why it's called Hanging Garden, just below this park, there are three water tanks and each water tank consists 33 million gallons of water. So basically almost 100 million gallons of water is just below this park. And that's the drinking water for the half of the south, like south Mumbai. Where we are now, it's, south, it's in the south of Mumbai. So that's the drinking water. You can see this lid here. That's the opening for the water All tanks. Right. So you'll see in many corners around, in yeah. every side. So that's for how they operated in the morning time and all. Uh, so it's hanging on top of the water well, I mean like a uh, water tank, that's why it's called Hanging Garden. Ah. Just before 120 years ago, this park never existed. And just uh, the reason why this park was made, I will tell you why. Just next door to this park, just opposite, that's the place called Tower of Silence, which is actually a cremation ground, a place for Parsis. Like I explained to you earlier, Parsis. So Tata and Freddie Mercury and all, people who belong to their religion, when they pass away, like when they die, what they do first thing is they donate their organs to uh, the hospital and like eyes, heart, whatever they need. And once they do that, they bring their body to the Tower of Silence and it's basically a 52, 52 acres of jungle there. And in that jump, big, huge, uh, it's absolutely dense, like a proper forest kind of stuff. In the middle of the jungle, they have three well, which looks like a normal water well, but massive in size. One is for the female's body, one male's body, and small one for the kids' bodies. Imagine if it's a male who passed away. After donating their body, they just bring them here. They slit the body into half. They apply sugar, oil, and sandalwood. Once they apply them, rub it. All these big, big birds like vultures, eagle, and buzzards, they come and start eating your flesh. After completely the body is eaten, then they push the body into that pit, which is completely concrete because Parsis, they don't believe in earth, like uh, earth, fire and water. Like Hindus, after we do, we do our cremation by fire, burning the bodies, and we pour the ashes in the sea or water, Ganges, and Muslims and Catholics and Christians, they bury them, but they don't believe in any, either any of them. 
what they believe is what they say when they're alive they help people in by charities and all when they die they help people by their organs and everything and when body is good for nothing so they give it back to the earth rather than disposing the body in by fire or earth. that's what they believe so that uh, these water park i'm like these well is just opposite to this yeah. park olden days what used to happen whenever these birds used to eat these flesh human beings bodies they used to fly on top of these water well sometimes they used to drop the meat and they used to contaminate whole drinking water right. so this was the main reason to save this whole drinking water problem the mayor of mumbai the statue which i showed you earlier near the station he was the man who came after this idea they said like okay let's cover this park for I me mean like water tank with the park so that people can have fresh air and you know evening walks and all and our water will be also safe this is how this park was invented by him and they called him called it as a hanging garden because hang on top of it the hanging gardens of mumbai created because birds would drop human flesh into the drinking water who would have thought that india is huge mr binny told us a little more about the culture we have 24 different states every states we have different uh like people they look different they eat different they wear different many people they believe in different gods and all there are plenty of gods yeah, yeah. so you can expect festivals in different times and different you know mm-hmm. so this is the common thing like i am from south south india south india kerala we have our own festival in august april and all like our new year, new year starts in april yeah So we have different time. Right. If we go to Sri Lanka, like uh, Chennai, they have their festivals in different time. Yeah. So everywhere you can different expect different parts. They have different uh, stories about different gods. Mm-hmm. Like for example, Sai Baba, like the day which I said today, Thursday, that god's main temple is in Shirdi, which is in Nasik, and uh, say a five to six hours drive. So that's where their main temple belongs to that particular god. Is there a particular s- story about that god? That is it? Is there he specific was, ones? Well, it's uh, difficult, but then he was basically he was a normal human being. He was like a beggar. Okay. But then he used to do many miracles when he was in the town, like in that village. Many things during the British time it happened. Uh, many people have noticed many. miracles happening there okay he was a very ordinary uh, like a beggar he mm-hmm. used to go to every home ask for grains rice as a you know so they used to donate him but whenever there used to be a problem in particular houses or anything he used to just go somehow he used to be there and bless them or they just used to find that okay that particular thing is completely gone I imagine if you have kind of illnesses or paralysis or whatever that no one can cure you and that thing has been done it would go so, so he's a recent god it was a recent god yeah okay so and there's they more they have made the temple and everything in his name now that's a very busy place now wow and they have the movie about him you should watch that movie it's called sai baba Uh-huh. Shirdi ke sai baba. So you can see from the beginning itself like you know. Interesting. Uh, but uh, many miracles have happened even with the British uh, the soldiers I uh, mean the main hierarchy officers they used to ob- uh, object certain things what he used to do and that was all you know. Okay. Yeah. So we It, we have these Did he have family? Did he have No, a, he was never married. No. Okay. But apparently he was a no one knows what caste he was but then they say he was Hind Muslim but then he was he is considered to be Hindu god. Yeah. And there are many and he always used to say his main thing was everyone's god is only one. Like he never said that he is a god. But he always used to say that there's only one god. Right. That's it. That was it. Because we don't just I'm trying to describe what Mumbai is like and I'm really struggling for words. It's massive. There's a lot of skyscrapers, not too tall. I mean they are tall. 
but um, it just goes on and on and on it's huge and the traffic is just constant I think I've said that already there's lots of green areas um, India is uh, is fascinating when I walked the Camino de Santiago for some reason I knew not knew well, I got the feeling that my next trip should be to India my next long walk now I know I'm doing other walks but like when I'm doing another long walk it should be through India and I'm not quite sure what that is now that I'm here um, I don't know how I feel about that I'm going to have to process those thoughts and feelings with regards to what that is um, as uh, Mr Binney is explaining to us 60% uh, of the population here are Hindu 25% uh, Muslim and then the rest of a uh, mix of uh, all the other religions or not so to speak uh, so when we talk about the Hinduism and the gods and all the people that are important to that uh, there are many 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 places that you can go to as a pilgrim uh, now what that would mean and be uh, is uh, going to be some research or I just don't know I don't know uh, something more to ponder isn't it it's just, just a feeling that this is the place where I should come next what a trip. I'm not finished with India. I will be back. A country culturally, historically rich, and the majority of the people I encountered there had a smile on their face. If you have any suggestions on where you'd like to hear the Story Pilgrim visit, please get in touch. Email me at connect at thestorypilgrim.com. Reach out via Facebook, Instagram, and X. The Story Pilgrim was written and produced by Darren Hill. Music by the amazing Anya Backer. Please follow, like and rate this podcast. Share it with those who need to reconnect. Until the next time, keep listening.